In this video, we're going to finish the points in three dimensions worksheet on the CUDA software website under the Infinite Algebra 2 section. Now our directions for the second page are to plot each point. And just like in those previous four problems, we're going to be drawing prisms to help us reference where that point is. For the x direction, forward is positive, backward from the origin is negative. For the y direction, to the right of the origin is positive, to the left of the origin is negative, and for z, above that origin is positive, and below, or down, is negative. So we're going to start by moving negative one in the x direction. That means we're going to be moving backward one. So we're somewhere along this line. Now, if we're looking at y, we're at negative in the y, so we're going to be moving to the left four. So one, two, three, four to the left. So now we fall somewhere along this line and the intersection of those occurs here. So let's go ahead and draw our first plane. So again, we're currently at this point here when we take into account our X and Y values. Now we need to take into account our Z value, which is a negative one. So we're going to be moving down in that negative z direction one. So moving this point down one, we will be approximately there. But let's make sure we map that accurately. And we'll do that by continuing to draw our prism. If we were to move down one, so finishing out drawing our three dimensional box or three dimensional prism, we can more accurately see the placement of our point. So here is where we ended after we found those x, y coordinates. So moving down one from that, we will be at this point. And these dashed lines represent the sides of the prism that would be not visible to us from our current perspective. So there is our plotted point in number 11. And to double check, again, we're going one back, four to the left, and then one down. Let's continue on to number 12. In number 12, our x value is a positive three. That means we're moving forward three. So we're falling along this line. And if y is negative one, that means we're moving to the left one. So we'll be falling along this line. Therefore, that intersection will be where our point is if we were to take only the x and y values into account. And then finally, once we look at z, that's going to be moving down one in the z direction. So this point will go down one. Now quickly, I wanna show you something that will help us in forming that prism to give us that three dimensional look. Where these intercept the given axis are all corners of our prism. So when x is three, that will be one corner of the prism. When y is negative one, so zero, negative one, zero, that will be another corner of the prism. And when z is negative one, so zero, zero, negative one, that will be another corner of our prism. And then finally, we can group x and y together, having z as a zero, that will be another corner. So three, negative one is a corner. So three, negative one, zero is a corner. Then three, zero, negative one is a corner. So three in the X, zero in the Y, and negative one in the Z. And then lastly, zero, negative one, negative one. So zero in the X, negative one in the Y, and negative one in the Z is another corner. And then you can finish out your box. So let's put things into perspective by drawing our solid lines and our dashed lines. So the solid lines are all visible from how we look at the figure, and the dashed lines are the ones that we would not see from this perspective, which would be the back lines. So those blue lines that I had just covered up that are not solid red. And there is our point at number 12. 
Let's use that same method to help us plot 13. First, let's start with our intercepts. So the x-intercept occurs at negative 1, 0, 0. So moving negative 1 in the x direction, we're moving backward 1. So I'll go ahead and plot that point. Now let's plot our y-intercept, which is 0, negative 3, 0, where it intercepts that y-axis. Moving 0 in the x, negative 3 in the y, and 0 in the z will be on that y-axis. And then finally, let's do that z-axis, intercept 0, 0, 1. So that's 0 in the x, 0 in the y, but 1 up. So let's connect those with lines from the origin. So you can already see we have three edges of our prism. Now let's create our other points. Let's do x, y, and then z as 0. So that's going to be negative 1, negative 3, 0. So negative 1 in the x, which is back 1, and then negative 3 in the y, 3 to the left, but 0 in the z. And because we're on the same plane, we'll be able to connect those other two points where z is 0 to help us form one face of our box or prism. Now let's see when x is negative 1, y is 0, and z is positive 1. So we're going negative 1 in the x, so we're going back 1. We're not moving to the left or right, but we're going to be going up 1. So now we can connect the points to form that face where y is always 0. And then lastly, we'll see when x is 0 and y and z are negative 3 and 1. So moving 0 in the x, so not moving forward or backward, but moving 3 to the left and then 1 up. Now we can make that face when x is always 0. And you can kind of guess where that last and final point will be. Because we're missing one point to complete our prism. That's negative 1, negative 3, 1. So going back 1, 3 to the left, and 1 up. And that point helps us complete our prism, which gives us the three-dimensional figure that helps us see visually where that point is, we just have to draw the solid and dashed lines now. So from this perspective, you will be able to see all of the top lines and all of the forward facing lines or the front lines and the side lines over here. However, you will not be able to see those back, so those will be dashed. And that's our prism that helps us find that point in number 13, negative 1, negative 3, 1. Now, number 14, we'll continue to practice by first finding those intercepts. So one intercept occurs when x is negative 3 and y and z are 0. So moving 3 in the negative x direction, we're going to be moving 3 back. So there is our x-intercept. Now let's look when y is 2 and x and z are 0. So if x is 0, we're not moving any forward or back. y is 2, so we're moving 2 to the right. And we're not moving up or down because we're looking at the intercept of y, which is 2. Now let's look at when x and y are 0 and z is negative 2. So we're not moving forward, backward, left or right. We're just moving down 2. Now let's connect each of these points into the origin following the axis. So you can see that our prism is starting to form. Now let's look at x and y when z is 0. So we're looking at negative 3, 2, 0. So moving negative 3, so back 3, 2 to the right, and then 0 in the z, we'll be able to form that first face of the box, which appears to be the top face. Then we'll look at when x is negative, y is 0, and z is negative 2. So moving 3 back and 2 down. Then we'll form the back side of our box, and then finally we'll see when x is 0 and y and z are 2 and negative 2. So not moving forward or back, but moving 2 to the right and 2 down. 
Now that helps us form our front face. So all that's left is that point that helps us form our back and right face, which is that point negative three, two, negative two. So moving negative three in the X, two in the Y, and then two down will be at this point here. So now let's finish forming our box. These front lines will be visible as well as these top lines and these front side lines and the back lines will not be visible so those will be dashed. And that's our solution in number 14. Now moving on to number 15. We're going to be at negative 4 in the X, so back 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to be 3 to the right, so 1, 2, 3, and then 0 in the Z. So because Z is 0, we fall on that X, Y plane. So going back 4 and to the right 3, we will be able to form a rectangle. And that's our solution in number 15. Lastly, we'll go over number 16. In number 16, we're going 4 back, 4 to the left, and 3 up. So let's first graph our intercepts. So negative 4 in the X, negative 4 in the Y, so that's 4 to the left, and then 3 up. Let's connect those to the origin, starting the edges of a few different faces of our prism. That will help us to give perspective on where our point lies. Now, looking at negative 4, negative 4, 0, we'll be at negative 4 in the X, and then negative 4 in the Y. Now, let's look at negative 4, 0, 3. So negative 4 in the X, 0 in the Y, but 3 in the Z. And to help when drawing, remember that these lines are going to be parallel. So this line is parallel with this line, this line will be parallel with this line, and so on. So use your ruler if you need help. And then lastly, let's look at when X is 0, Y is negative 4, and Z is positive 3. So X is 0, Y is negative 4, so that's 4 to the left, and then 3 up to here. Now all that's left is to plot our actual point. Negative 4, negative 4, 3. So 4 back, 4 to the left, and 3 up. Now let's draw our prism for some perspective. And that's our final solution on this worksheet. And it's important to have that prism for perspective because what if I was to put a point here? It's difficult to see whether we're forward in the x direction or whether we're backwards in the x direction. It's easy to see that we're to the right in the y direction and down in the z, but it's unclear what coordinate is associated with x. That's why having that prism as perspective is important because this is very different from this. And the more you work with these coordinates, the easier it will be to draw and picture them in your head. So just continue to practice and create new coordinates for yourself to try and draw on your own. And before attempting that, go ahead, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your classmates.